All right, so let's start a conversation on how to shift the script. And because this was one Chad was trying to do, let's go ahead and throw it over to Chad first to get us started. Man, I just remember when I first saw this, it's like these, these things that are so deeply ingrained in us from birth, from this script. And I didn't, I didn't even know it was a script until I, until I watched this. And just the idea that, you know, that you're going to go to school and get good, great. And he's going through it. I'm like, every human being knows the answer because we're all on the same script, you know? And then it, and then put that in combination with something I heard years ago. And this is kind of the best way I can sum it up is, is Jim Rohn was in, in a room of about 2000 people. And he, uh, he had, he always has so many, like, a thousand great things to learn, right? But this particular weekend, he said, there's only one thing I want you to take away. And, you know, and, and he took time, he took like 10 minutes for everybody to memorize this. And so I listened to it over and over and over and over and memorized it. And it's become, I think it's become my script, my new script. And so what he basically said was, um, through testimonials and personal experience, we have enough information to conclude that it's possible to design and live an extraordinary life. See, the script I was following, I didn't see an extraordinary life at the end of it. And so then what that did, this new script, what it did for me is it made me start defining for me what designing and living an extraordinary life looked like. You know, for example, we might have had, uh, you know, at one point my father-in-law, he worked uh, for a great company and six-figure earner, and I could have went and got a job there and made six figures. But I didn't, I was never, I, I knew that part of me designing and living an extraordinary life never included sitting in, a, in an office in a cubicle, you know, inside a building. That just was, I knew enough that that wasn't for me. That wasn't the route that I wanted to go. I knew a lot of things to not do. Like I worked in the car factory already and I know I don't ever want to go back to that. Right. And so just figuring it out, fig, figuring it out. And, you know, so just spending the time and, and I love a, a lot of people say, and I agree with that most people spend more time uh, planning their two week vacation every year than they do planning their life. And just saying, you know, what does living and what does designing and living an extraordinary life look like for me? Because it doesn't look the same. It could, it could look different between what Joel thinks it is, and I think it is, and Tay thinks it is. And that's kind of the point is that it's learning and determining what life we want to live all the way, all encompassing where we have happiness in all the different areas. You know, uh, Dave Ramsey would talk about the wheel and, you know, the different areas where you have your, your, your spiritual and, and relational and success and income and, you know, these different, I think he calls it the wheel of life. But the point of this is, is that we all do have pressure and we all do have a script. I know so many people that as a young kid, maybe you're a third generation, uh, you know, your mom was a nurse and your grandma was a nurse. And, and then so this expectation is there that you're just going to grow up and be a nurse. And everybody just thinks it's going to be a nurse. And it's that pressure that's put on you all the time. And, or it's just, you know, you're going to go to college because your dad went to college and your grandpa went to college. And, and it's just the expectation. And it's never even, do you want to go to college? It's which college you could be a freshman in high school, which college are you going to go to? Which college are we preparing for? And maybe you never even wanted to go to college. So I think part of it is that we have to learn that, it's more important to understand why God designed us than to follow expectations that a family member or someone else has over our life. Um, and then just questioning these things, you know, questioning, questioning the script. And because a lot of times we just go down and people say, why, you know, like with him, why, 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 why? Well, isn't it what I'm supposed to do? And how many people, I know a lot of these people, you probably do too, go to college and they, they fight and they do great in college and they get that degree and then they go, now what? And they go, uh, I can't get the job that I wanted to get. I mean, the, 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 the statistics are staggering. It's like 40% or something like that of college graduates can't find a job in their, in their area of expertise that they just got a degree in and they don't even end up using that degree. So a lot of people just go, I don't know what to do, so I'll go back to school. I go back to school and get on another degree and go back to school and get on another degree. And if that's the, if that's your pathway, that's great. I'm not saying college is bad. I'm just saying you have to understand the end point. You begin with the end in mind. Right. Um, and just a couple more things, you know, the script hasn't changed since the 1900s. I mean, the script, you know, 40 years work for 40 years for a company and then retire on 40% of what you were used to living on in the first place. Doesn't really work on average. Now people change their, 
their careers seven times in their lifetime. So the old script, we just know it doesn't, it doesn't work like it was originally intended and it did work originally, but it just hasn't changed. I wish I had the courage to live the life I wanted. That is the number one thing of the dying. Man, I wish I would have had the courage to live the life I wanted. That's something I'm never going to say. I'm going to, I'm going to have a full heart, empty, my energy is going to be all out there, spread out across the world on the table. If you come visit me in the nursing home, I promise you, I will not say, I wish I lived the life because I will have lived the life. And that's, that's, uh, that's something I think that all of us, it's worth pursuing. Um, so we talked about traditionalists. I think we all get that. It helped me to kind of understand the dialogue between, you know, the, the baby boomers and the, and the millennials. Did you guys kind of get that? He, he said that the, the older are saying, follow the script, and the younger say, it's not working. The older say, they're not listening, and the younger say, it's not working. And I get it. I understand it. I understand people like my, my father that barely, barely know how to check their email, you know, <laughs> or other people that are like, internet. You know, we, I live here in a little town that's only about 30 minutes outside of Nashville, but you, you might as well think it's on the edge of the world. You know, we have restaurants that just started accepting credit cards recently <laughs> in our city. We had, a, we had a family video still open until like a few months ago. You know, it's like, come on, man. You're supposed to go out of business like you know, three years ago, right? Nobody uses a family video anymore. But it just goes to show the, the wave and that people, there are elements of society that resist, you know, like amazon.com, huh? they might take my credit card number, right? And we're just like, hey, here's my card, everybody have it. And if you take it, we'll cancel it and get a new one. And who cares, right? So it's possible, it's possible to design and live an extraordinary life and, you know, just become who you're meant to be. And uh, I think this just brings a lot of awareness to us that we are a lot of us, until we wake up to it, we're following the script that was handed to us. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people think about this. Think about just religion and politics. A lot of people, you say, why do you believe what you believe? I was taught to. I don't know. Why are you for, you know, this side or for this side in politics? My parents were. So I think it's healthy to ask why and, and learn and discover for ourselves. I know that's something I, te I want to teach my kids. I bring my kids in and I say, hey, let's watch this channel on TV and this channel on TV. They're they're different perspectives of the same thing. And you get to figure out what you think is right and what you think isn't. And if you want my opinion, I'll give you my mine. But ultimately, you have to figure it out on your own. I don't want my kids to follow. I don't want to influence them other than, you know, kind of sometimes with our kids, we got to kind of steer them in a positive way a little bit kind of thing. But anyway, so I was just rambling. But uh, I love this one. And I think it's it was a wake up call for me. And hopefully it was for you, too. It's good, Chad. Uh, now we all know that Tay's woke, so let's find out what Tay got written down for some notes on this. Cause this, I, I had four pages in 15 minutes. Yeah, I was, uh, for the sake of you guys, I was trying to like, just make some small points so I don't go on for days talking about this. Uh, I think it's just so good in so many ways. Uh, and I think, like you said, once your eyes are open to it, and you find and like the first thing that I wrote down was like that he said was just being aware that there is a strip and uh, ultimately knowing like uh, the one question that he asked that I think I just had an aha moment. He says, ask, is it moving me towards the life I want or away from the life I want? And I think I had that back uh, in 2015 when I decided to retire from my job and retire from uh, just playing uh, as a professional football player, because I knew deep down inside that it, the happiness just wasn't there. Even after winning the championship, there was still a void. So for me, just seeking these things out that wasn't bringing me happiness, I knew I had to make a decision. And I think once I made that decision uh, is when I ultimately I start rewriting that different strip. And uh, just kind of make it show you what it looked like for me when he says be a creator of your own strip, knowing that you can, you know, uh, write your own strip. For me, one thing that, you know, one part of the strip that I use John Maxwell, he tell us all the time, every single day add value to people. So every single day I try to find ways to add value to people, even if it's in the smallest way. And that has become a part of my strip. Every single day, person development, that has become part of my strip. 
uh, every year uh, since uh, probably the last five or six years, Chad introduced us to this uh, Bible study, men's Bible study, Every Man is a Warrior. So guess what's a part of my strip now? Every single year, I find myself going through one of these Bible study courses to become a better dad, a better father, and a better, father, and a be a better man overall. So you just have to be aware of we're aware of the fact that it is a strip and you have to understand that you have the power to control and write your own strip but you have to seek out the resources you have to understand it's not going to be easy because once you become the creator of something you have to understand like you're paving the way and many times you have to be the one to blaze that drill you have to be the one to get out and cut down all the bushes and the trees and everything that's in the way because you're creating something new uh, i heard this quote uh dr uh, darius daniel said one time and i just loved it because it just reminded me that there's sometimes is going to be hard. Uh, he said, he said, sometimes in order for you to be the first person to do something in your family, you have to go, you have to go through a season of being the only one to do it. So like thinking back when Chad said, like, you know, if you had a mom who was a nurse and her mom was a nurse and, you know, they're looking at you to be a nurse, understanding like if you don't want to be a nurse, that's not in your calling. Like you're going to have to be the, 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 in order for you to be the first one outside of your family, that's not going to be a nurse and you're growing up to be whatever it is that you want to be, entrepreneur, then you're gonna be the only person in your family to be doing the thing. So you're gonna be looked at as the crazy one, the one who doesn't have everything together, the one who needs the help, the one who the family needs to call uh, some type of support system to get you to see uh, that you're not moving in that direction. So I think as you move into these areas, I think it's also important to elevate the rest of your life, elevate your belief system. Why, like, that's probably one of the most powerful questions that you can ask, why do I believe what I believe? And I think you can get stuck trying to figure that out. Because I think ultimately when you get down to the root of it, it all points back to how you was raised or the influence that was around your life. So uh, I love that he said that and, uh, the last thing that I shared, he said, shift the strip, create your own way. And then he said, stop trying to be the person who you was told to be and become the person you were meant to be. Uh, and I just think you have to understand, like, uh, just this uh, other quote that I love, and I just love quotes because I think they're so catchy and they're so powerful. And I think if you just grab quotes and scriptures in times when you have this disbelief or you have people coming against you, those are the things that you can just pull down. And it's, uh, for me, it was, uh, it said, anytime that you want to live your dream, you have to, uh, you have to understand there's going to be people who wants to turn it into a nightmare. So whenever you decide to step out and just chase your dreams and go after the things you want, people are gonna come against you. And they're not coming against you to stop you. They're coming against you because they, they fear that they didn't have the courage to do it when they had the opportunity to do it. So you have to understand, these are the people that's gonna give you that fire to go after you want. They can't, they can't put your fire out, only you can put your fire out. All they can do is throw fuel, fuel on your fire. So you have to take that as criticism, criticism that's gonna elevate you to continue to go forward, continue to dig into your why, why did you decide to do these things, and continue to let it feed your faith so that you can continue to take step after step, day after day, and continue to go after the things that ultimately that you want. So uh, I think you just have to ask these questions to yourself that they ask, they're very powerful questions, and they're gonna cause you to actually, you know, make changes. Uh, I think once you open your eyes to these questions, you really get honest with yourself. There's going to be some things that's going to bring up from your past, but I think it's things that you have to deal with because it's going to help you be better in the long run. So uh, just understanding like the strip that you follow is ultimately going to lead you to the life that you want. So uh, be aware of the strip that you're living out today and just know like you've been showing up to these personal developments uh, for the longest now. So this has become a part of your strip. And this has been building your belief system that there is more for you, that you were created for more, that you are beautiful, that you are enough, that you are strong enough, that you are all these things that God says you are. You just have to continue to just write that strip, follow that strip, and just figure out what you want in life and go after those things. And I think if you do that, you will ultimately find and get everything in life that you want. Okay, did you guys catch what Tay said? When you decide to go out and rewrite your script, somebody wants to turn that into a horror film. That was how I understood it. I mean, the way that you said it was when you go out to accomplish your dreams, somebody's going to come along to turn that into a nightmare. But I think going along with this whole thought process of there was a script written for you. And we wanted to make sure that you were aware of that now. Now that you're aware of it, you have the ability to combat that. So now that you can combat that, it's time for you to grab that pen and write your own script. You know, you have to ask, why are you doing all of this? I think that ultimately comes down to 
how you move from being in the script that was written for you into writing your own script. When you want to write your own story, you need to ask the questions of why were you doing the things that you were already doing? You know, when we talk about this business, we always talk about starting with why. Because when somebody decides to come along and challenge you, you need to focus on why it is that you decided to do this so that you can push through the adversity that somebody tries to bring to you. So when we were talking about the script, he said, there's always been a script. There always will be one. The second point was shift happens. The script will change and it's always changing based on how things happen in the world. And the third thing he said is scripts work. Why do you think everyone asks for scripts to communicate to people, scripts to reply to people? Is because people want to have the comfort of knowing something. That's why people ask for them. But the thing is, is will the script that you're following lead you to the life that you want to live? I, I love that whole process of following the steps to success. We, we could just use it in this context and call it the script to success because of the fact that if you follow it consistently and persistently, it will cause you to get to the things in life that you want. Oh, disappointment comes when you realize that the promise of the script that you've been following doesn't match up with the results in the life that you want. You know, the number one regret that they said, I, I love this, Chad pointed to it, was the fact that getting to the end of your life and realizing that you didn't do the things that you wanted to <clears throat> and you didn't live authentically to yourself. Instead, you conformed and lived to the expectations of other people. Guys, today, make the decision to not have that regret on your deathbed. Choose today to write your story and not let somebody else write the story for you. You know, the traditionalists just want to keep going. They want things to be the same as they always were. Traditionalists, you know, currently right now with the current crisis, they want life to get back to normal. They want it to get back to the comfortable, same thing that they were used to. Don't go outside the lines, follow along, follow the herd, be sheep, be cattle. Nobody wants things to be different. But then you've got the rebels and the rebels go against their tradition. Those are the people that are like, oh man, we're gonna accelerate everything that's happening right now. But the thing is, is that they don't really have a script to follow. They just don't wanna follow any script. So they're just kind of like chaos bumping around, causing even more problems. And then the third group of people are the creators. Those are the people that look at the difference between traditionalists and the rebels, and they take the things that they like, and then for the rest of it, they go out and create. And so that's the thing that we want you to become today is the creator of your own story. And that's what's so amazing about what we have with this It Works business opportunity is you have the ability to go out and create your own story. You can take your existing story and use that to help others while at the same time creating a new story that you can go share with others. You know, one of the greatest compliments that you can always have, and, and I hear this time and time again, is becoming a footnote in the success of other people. Helping somebody else come to the realization that they're on a path that they really didn't realize they wanted to go on, and then you brought the opportunity to them, and then it completely and radically changes their lives and the lives of their families. That's what's so amazing about the opportunity that you have. What part of your current script do you have right now that you are actively going to change? That's the challenge for today is to take a look at the script that you've been given and see where you can make that shift. Because one, you have to admit that there's a script. Now that you know, ask why. Start questioning the script that you've been giving and then become the creator of your story and the stories of others.
Guys, super excited to go through this with you. Make sure you go back through and listen again because I'm sure there's tons that we missed. I mean, this was a bunch of information crammed into like 17 minutes. So go back, take some more notes and make sure that you share this with somebody and let them know that they're on a script that could possibly change once you show them that they're on the script. Guys, go out, make it an amazing day, and we'll see you again next time.